Here's what I think of when I hear that. Again, the word pragmatism comes up because you're talking about, well, what's the use of it? What's the point of it? So then I'm wondering, well, is is reality or theorizing tied to pragmatism? In some sense, yes, because we're finite beings, we have to choose to do something. But then can we not philosophize for the sake of philosophizing? So that's what occurs to me then at the same time when saying, well, we don't know if these Chinese dragons are playing football in some other dimension that never interacts with us. However, I would say it's still, firstly, it's fun to think about Chinese football playing dragons. And second, just like we were talking about in the beginning, scientists have an aversion, or generally now, contemporary scientists have an aversion to philosophizing. They would say, well, this is much of what you're talking about, especially when it comes to metaphysics, is unfalsifiable. Science is a methodology. Let's apply that. Let's stick to our mathematics. But then you were making the great argument, which is that leads us to plenty of places, even if it seems misleading at first, or even if it seems to not interact with us first. So that's what else I think about it, is that, okay, even if we say there are these non-interacting Chinese dragons that play football, okay, let me hear you out. Do you truly believe that? Do you have some great arguments for it? Let's hear it. Okay, let's think about that. Would this be the case of that? And then you can arrive someplace interesting. So I'd say, first, you said it's about a point. What is the point? What is the use? Then I say, well, that's pragmatism. That's pragmatism in the sense of it has to have a use to us. And I'm saying, well, we could talk about that. But then also at the same time, there could be a use in the sense that, well, we could talk about incomprehensible, unfalsifiable notions and still lead us somewhere propitious in the long run. Okay, so that's what I think. Now, I say that, and I'm curious, what are your thoughts on what I've just said? Oh, um, I, I, I would not not disagree with you. Um, I think there is a tradition in philosophy so let me develop something I hinted before. There's a tradition in philosophy which is to warn uh, philosophy as a cure. Wittgenstein is a master of that cure against wrong questions. Uh, we're wrong. What does wrong mean here? Uh, you probably would call me a pragmatist if you say wrong means useless. Um, so, uh, like not good for us ultimately leads us astray, but as humans. Yeah. Um, yeah, so just uh, take us to the wrong, uh, to, to the wrong, uh, if, if we stay in science, science was often liberated, uh, uh by philosophical thinking that, uh, science often made step ahead by getting input from philosophy that said, well, you don't, you don't have to ask this question. Um, uh, uh certainly this played a role in Copernicus, but played a bigger role in Einstein. Einstein uh, got from Mach the idea that uh, uh, the asking the question of uh, uh, what it's really, really meaning of two things happening at the same time is just a wrong question. I mean, forget about that. That's not meaningful. I mean, and uh, 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 also from Mach, uh, Heisenberg took the idea that uh, uh, the electron doesn't have a position at any time directly from this is a this is a wrong you you you're imposing a, a so there, there is a there's a tradition in philosophy which is warning uh, uh, against the wrong kind of questions and uh, I, I think what I'm saying here what I'm trying to say here is that uh, um it's a uh, the notion of reality is good uh, because we we use it to distinguish the the, the chair in the mirror from the chair uh, on which I can see to distinguish the dream from the from what I see when I'm awake, for describing what is a, what is in a play or in a novel from what is not in a play in a novel, you, if you, or, or or for distinguish. I mean, you tell me that yesterday you met uh, uh, John and say, is that real or false? I mean, <laughs> you lie. That's is meaningful. This is uh, we know exactly what you mean by real and false here. Um, but then, if we take this notion of real. And we make it, uh, 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 we extrapolate it to say everything we see is not real. Uh, because everything we see uh, has a level of illusion of some kind, much weaker kind of the mirror, much weaker kind, uh, it's good that we realize that there's a level of illusion, but then we are postulating that there is a 
underlying reality behind that, uh, and that postulation might be uh, wrong, uh, simply wrong, or at least it's, let's put it this way, it's remarkable that science failed to get to that ultimate reality so far. So why should we expect it? We, what is an ultimate reality? I mean, quantum fields? I mean, we don't even know exactly what is a quantum field because of the complication of quantum mechanics. We know what is a classical field. Um, a quantum field is something that manifests itself with particles. Okay, but the particles are not real. So we are confused on the ultimate reality, even in contemporary physics, um, in contemporary physics uh, today, uh, not to mention about in philosophy in general. What is the ultimate reality? Matter, energy, God, spirits, language, uh, you know, uh, Everybody came out with a with an ultimate reality story, and 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 failed to convince the others. Um, so the perspective I find it uh, interesting is to de-emphasize the notion of ultimate reality. Ah, and, uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. And use the word reality at at, at level by level. I mean, there's it's real that there's a chair there. But it's also real that that chair is as some illusory thing. It's also real that it's just a bunch of atoms. Both things are true. Uh, and, and, and within each context, something is real, something is it's also real. And we can add context, add, add levels in which is a better understanding of reality uh, without getting trapped into, oh my God, we don't have access to reality. We do have access to reality. That's the chair. Okay, I'll explain my thoughts, what occurs to me, and then we can get to rapid fire questions and answers just from the audience, because you've been so generous with your time. Thank you. Is that cool? Absolutely. Okay. This has been a very philosophical uh, thing. Little physics, little loop quantum gravity, little quantum. This is very, very good. About, I get basic philosophy of science and physics understanding and the nature of reality. Let me recapitulate what you said so I make sure that we're on the same page. There are different ways that we use the word reality, just like there are different ways we use the word time, and just like there are different ways we use the word almost any noun, essentially, depending on the context. So let's imagine we can put these contexts in separate boxes. Much of the confusion occurs when we think, well, we mean, well, much of, much of miscommunication is we intend it to be from box A, but you perceive it as from being from box B, so the contexts are mixed up. And what I was wondering is, when it comes to reality, even within the same context, I don't see there being an internally consistent, even within the context. And by the way, you mentioned Wittgenstein. Wittgenstein had this notion of language games. I believe the language games would be the equivalent of context here, boxes. I'm wondering if there's an internally an internally consistent notion of reality. Okay, so, well... And then where was I going with that? Ah, ah, okay. Now my, what I think is, at least I haven't seen any. And any time I try to come up with, well, I haven't seen any internally consistent definition of reality. Now there are a couple answers to that. One is the Donald Hoffman method. Re forget it. So it's, there's no reality. It's all unreal in some sense. Then there's the phenomenological answer, the phenomenology answer, which is actually all you experience is real. It's real to you. Even if you're schizophrenic and you see a snake in front of you, that's real to you. But then you you actually took a different route, which I never occurred, which is, please stop using the word reality. Just let's forget about it. So am I making a correct summary? And if I'm incorrect, yes. just correct. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, please stop uh, using the word reality uh, unlabeled. and uh, uh, Divorced of context? Word reality. I mean, use use the word reality in each context. So it's like we should have reality sub A, reality yeah, sub B, real, yeah, and make sure yeah, that we're yeah. in, okay. in this movie, this is real, this is real, this is false. But that's a movie. It's all false in, in, in a different sense of real. So the, 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 the real has it's a variety of meaning within the context in which you, uh, in which you, you use it. So in a context, we give me a context and I, I give you a, a much better definition of reality, okay? In the context of the Miserable written by Victor Hugo, I can absolutely uh, uniquely say what is real and what is not real. What is real is what is written in the book. It's not real is what you write. It's not written in the book, okay? 
in the context of the history of the United States, it's absolutely real. Maybe uh, when we can make a mistake, but we know that we make a mistake. So we know what is real, what is not real. That, you know, George Washington announced becoming a king, whatever, uh, whatever happens. Um, so context by context, we have a, we have a clean notion of, of, of reality, which allows us to make distinction um, between real things and not real things. It's a unique word, real, reality, to reality, real, not real, outside all context, which I think is dangerous. You just watched a clip from the Theories of Everything channel. For the full video and all its magnificence, then click here. And if you'd like to see more, then subscribe. Enjoy.